Hello and welcome to No Spin. I'm Nidhi Razdan. If there is one story that should stir your conscience and make you positively furious, it is the story of Bilkis Banu. More than a week after 11 men were released early from prison despite being convicted of gang raping Bilkis and brutally murdering members of her family, more outrageous details are emerging. Today, the Indian Express has reported that how, despite their life sentence, many of the convicts got parole for long periods of time over the years, with witnesses to the massacres also complaining that they were being threatened by the accused when they would come out. The trial originally had to be moved out of Gujarat to Maharashtra because Bilkis was receiving death threats. Then, in January of 2008, a special CBI court sentenced the 11 accused to life in prison on the charge of gang rape and murder. In May of 2017, the conviction was upheld by the Bombay High Court. But the 11 men not only walked out of jail last week under a remission policy of the Gujarat government, but they were also garlanded and given sweets on their exit. Amongst others, BJP MLAs were on the panel that decided to release the rapists and murderers. Bilkis, remember, was five months pregnant and 21 years old when she was gang raped and assaulted. They killed her three-year-old daughter in front of her. And the pressing question before all of us today is whether the Supreme Court should step in now on its own and make sure that these men are jailed again. Joining us first on the program tonight, Senior Advocate of the Supreme Court, Indira Jai Singh is with us. Indira Jai Singh, just very simply right on, you know, off the bat, is this a fit case for the Supreme Court's Suomoto intervention or not? Yes, indeed, and more so because the judgment of the Supreme Court, uh, on the basis of which they have been released, at least that's the claim, is itself very, very faulty. Uh, it ignores many other judgments of the Supreme Court of larger benches, which have categorically said that the appropriate government will be the government of the state where the case was tried. I would say this is one more reason, apart from the moral reason uh, for the Supreme Court intervening so motto. Uh, so this is, this is a case which is wrong in law, wrong in morality. On both counts, the Supreme Court should step in to restore its own morality and credibility. The, the question, though, I, I have to ask is that when you look at these panels, these committees that are set up to look at uh, things like uh, remission policies, it's astounding that, you know, you would have, uh, you know, MLAs of political parties, those with very clear political links uh, on this, such as was the case here in Gujarat. Where is the fairness in that uh, at all? Uh, Nidhi, uh, I must tell you that the Supreme Court has held that in the final analysis, it will be the opinion of the trial court which will be decisive. The problem here is that the trial court was not even made aware of the impending release or consulted. So here you have a situation in which every single known law was violated. I agree that it's not fair to have uh, members of a political party on a jail release committee, but the law does have checks and balances. And one of them is you consult the judge who convicted. Why was this not done? That's a big question that's facing us today. As I said, Nidhi, I do not wish to get into the uh, legalese of the situation because I think the question that's confronting us is the morality, the morality of the nation and the morality of the Supreme Court of India. And what is the moral challenge that it presents before us? Simply, be I'm asking this because, you know, uh, we went through the whole sort of trial of the Nirbhaya rapists and there's a whole debate about the death penalty, etc. But at the end of the day, I think the country was united that there needed to, uh, you know, justice needed to be done, needed to be seen to be done. Here you have, you know, the complete opposite happening. Uh, what does it mean, you know, for, for our moral fabric uh, when there is a That's section today in India that is defending this and saying that it's okay? Yes, I mean, that is the only key question. What is the morality of the situation? Now, uh, uh, the uh, remission must be granted having regard, among other factors, to the horrendous nature of the crime. Let's discuss that for a moment. What was the horrendous nature of the crime? Not just what you outlined in your presentation, but much more than that. Remember that this crime 
occurred in the context of a larger crime against humanity. It occurred in the context of a carnage against a minority community. This was not just a rape of Bilkish Banu. It was the teaching of a lesson to an entire minority community. So come back to the question, what's the morality over here? The morality is what is the context in which these individuals were convicted? The context is one of carnage. The context is one of crimes against humanity. And I don't know of any policy which says that you can remit a life sentence in relation to crimes against humanity. Let me get Mr. Aryama Sundaram, senior lawyer of the Supreme Court, also joining us with you, Indra Jaising. Uh, Mr. Aryama Sundaram, would you too agree with Indra Jaising that this is a fit case for the Supreme Court's Suomoto intervention, that the court needs to step in? Look, unlike my dear friend Indra, I don't tend to uh, predict or astrologize on what the court would or would not do. But let me just uh, highlight a few things here, which is very relevant from this case. We must understand its relevance with other cases. And it's this. You see, at one time, I'm talking about 1990, 1980, all that. A life sentence was usually assumed to be 14 years. Why assumed to be 14 years? Because after 14 years, one could get remission. And in those days, the idea was that after 14 years, if a person has now reformed and can once again go into society, they should now be allowed to go back and enter society again. That was the idea under which after 14 years, one could then ask for remission of the sentence, even if it was a life imprisonment. As time has gone on, the Supreme Court has started a system, sometimes when commuting a death sentence to life imprisonment, of saying they shall be given life imprisonment and shall not be released during the natural, stage, natural uh, span of their life. Now that is something which the court has done and that again is a matter which has been constitutionally uh, questioned in many ways as to whether the court can put a complete embargo. Now therefore, the idea of remission is that in those days also you must realize the longevity of life was much shorter. So the idea of remission is that after a few years, after 14 years, if a person has paid his crime to society, paid his debt to society, and his conduct is looked into, it is seen whether he has reformed himself, it is seen as to whether he has behaved all right during those 14 years, and then he is remitted. Now, what has happened here is the Supreme Court did direct that the remission would be considered as per the 1990s policy which follows more or less the same theme of a remission after 14 years if the person has otherwise not done anything to merit a sentence but continuing Sundaram, two or to disentitle him from remission. Couple of things now, here. One, of is course what, is the, no, one, me, one of course is the brutality. I, I'm coming to the gravity of the offence. Gravity, but two th the other thing I just want to bring of in the here. Offense. The Indian exactly. Express had a terrific story today about how when these guys were in jail, serving that sentence all these years they have gone out on parole multiple times for various reasons sometimes two months sometimes three months and witnesses to that uh, crime on that day the horrors of that day have been threatened by them they have multiple accounts in the newspapers today i don't know which exactly. reform uh, you, you know, know w w what uh, sort of regret actually anything actually that, you have you know, put your finger at. on it yeah Exactly. You put your finger on it. This is exactly it. I will not go by the story of Indian Express or any other media. But what has to be gone into in this case is when considering remission, were all these factors taken into consideration? It has to be seen. Was it a fact that they had threatened witnesses in the meantime? Was it a fact when they came out on probation they had behaved in this way? Was it a fact that what the paper has said is actually so? That is a matter to be looked into. And I fully agree with you on this that if it is found that all this is actually true, that there are people who, when they came out, they threatened witnesses, they said they would get their retribution against the family, etc., 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 then it would definitely be a most relevant consideration for the parole board, for the remission board to have considered before granting remission. And if any challenge is made against this order, I think what the court would really look into is, was it, were there enough reasons, were all relevant criteria considered, were irrelevant criteria is 
issued and therefore was it a decision which was correctly taken now that is certainly open to judicial review and in judicial review what you have said if it is actually shown that all this happened would be factors the court would take into account when when discussing as to whether when deciding as to whether that remission order is correct or not but, but that let, is the relevant okay, facts which I have to be considered what you're saying. i understand what you're saying but indira jai singh is the is the point here also i mean apart from the fact that these uh, these men seem to have uh, you know uh, violated every possible parole rule uh, you know the, the I, mean, i mean citing the indian express because they've actually talked to witnesses they have people they have quoted they have police complaints that they have accessed and you know put in print but indira jai singh the gravity of the crime itself now there is a case for remission there's a reason why uh, uh, you know as mr sundaram pointed out that that policy was put into place but does there need to be an exception for heinous crimes like this one uh, where it's you know, you know the gravity is clear irrespective of what happened later it is may may i take that question yes it's for you yes uh you know i'm sorry to have to point out that i think uh that i suspect that mr sundaram has not read the judgment on which reliance is being placed uh that is the judgment authored by justice prat sogi and justice vikram nath and since the people are taking the cover of that judgment to justify this release this remittance it's necessary to point out that the supreme court has not respected its own previous judgments mr sundaram did not answer the question why the trial court judge was not consulted and uh, 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 you know if if the supreme court is not going to respect its own previous judgments who is going to respect them now on the question of the gravity of the crime i don't think there can be any disagreement that the crime was not only grave but it was a crime against humanity therefore i think the supreme court is duty bound to undo the wrong that is done finally of course the 1992 policy does not give a right to be released on remittance it only gives the right to be considered and why that consideration is happening it is necessary to look at the gravity of the crime now i don't think anybody is disputing the fact that the crime was very grave so apart from anything else the decision taken by the com committee is a perverse decision which requires to be undone right and right. let's not forget that british banu has gone on record to say that she fears for her life even today right now as we speak absolutely i wonder and and, what, and and one does wonder if if there's uh, one case that's fit for the supreme court so, so motor intervention it, it would be this one uh, indira jai singh arivan sundaram thank you for joining us on the program today let me uh, go across now to priyanka chaturvedi member of parliament from the shiv sena joining us on the program uh, today mr alok watts from the bjp is with us and also a very special guest we have singer rabi shergil joining us uh rabi shergil in fact had composed a song for bilkis banu many years ago uh, we have in fact uh, a bit of that song um with us today as well rabi had written that song for her uh, when he released an album uh, or you know about co communal issues that that were dividing the country uh priyanka chaturvedi to you first uh you, you know we're, we're getting these horrifying little details every day of you know uh, th this case how it unfolded the fact that now you know these people have had parole for various reasons over the years flimsy reasons uh it's like the entire system has collapsed so uh i was listening to both the lawyers senior lawyers discussing this and uh, the first question that came to my mind one part is the legality of it all the second is the very moral fabric of this nation today it lies in tatters today as a woman belonging to a particular religion what would bilkis banu be going through from 2002 onwards she has fought this fight on her own and in 2008 she manages to get them convicted for their crimes then we see how these these uh, these convicted rapists get preferential treatment while they're serving their imprisonment and then they're also considered for uh, parole uh, uh, the parole obviously they have uh, by uh, they bypass some norms and they've also got remission remission categorically states i was listening to mr aryan uh, aryan sundaram he says the, by the virtue of them having served 14 years in the 1980s and 1990s we're talking about a horrific uh, riot and where in that riot this was looked at as a revenge crime 
and revenge crime against a woman and her family. This cannot come under that 14 years of uh, remission and uh, life imprisonment having completed if you've completed 14 years of your tenure. So many norms have been bypassed. A, the parole, B, the remission, C, the committee deciding them, having lots of BJP MLAs, D, and the most important factor, which I find extremely defining of the society we are living in, is absolute silence from many quarters. And that is what depresses me as a woman yeah. who believed in the constitutional morality of this nation, three pillars of this democracy that we continue to harp on, whether it is the legislative, the executive or the judiciary, all three are maintaining that silence. Absolutely. And, that and, and, and politically in particular as well, because we're seeing an election in Gujarat. So there's a lot of cynical politics that's playing out here. But Rabi Shergil, thank you for coming today. What are your thoughts on, you know, the fact that th this has happened over the last few days, this horrifying release of these men? You wrote a song for Bilkis. Uh, what do you feel today about this? Um, I, I feel I was uh, a sort of an idolist, uh, idolist back then. And um, now I guess I'm just um, a little more jaded. Um, as I look back on my own lifetime, um, uh, we've seen Bhagalpur. We've seen 84 and, uh, you know, there were a lot of other um, um, small incidents in the middle, co small compared to these big ones. And then we had um, uh, Gujarat. So I, I noticed that the society doesn't really care about justice. And uh, the, the less it cares about justice, the more it paves the way of repetition of uh, the same events. So um, looking at this right now, um, it, it feels like uh, we have lost the, um, the conviction, the moral conviction to, to really fight it. We, we've just given up as a society. And uh, uh, when you look at what happened in uh, 84, for instance, and you look, when you go to Tilak Vihar, I don't know how many people have gone to Tilak Vihar, even uh, I've gone there uh, only a few times. Um, we just don't care what happens as long as they are out of sight, out of mind. And um, it keeps on repeating itself. Um, I, I feel um, more cynical than before. I feel jaded. It's pretty str strong words coming from you to say that you feel cynical and jaded. And I remember that I think it was, it's been more than 10 years, uh, maybe more close to 15 years since you actually wrote this song for Bilkis. And, and in fact, you, you wrote a bunch of songs for, for others as well. I remember Satendra Dubey as well, Bilkis. What was it about Bilkis's story that, that made you want to pen this song for her at that time? I, 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 just take not, us through uh, that. Bilkis was, um, um, you know, uh, a collective wound on our conscience. Um, so were so were the other people. And I was um, in Bombay, and I remember. Um, I think on that show that we did for NDTV, they even called Navleen Kumar's son. And uh, later after the show, I asked him, "So, what do you feel about? Are you proud to be her son?" And uh, he said, "No, I don't." He said, um, um, "I'm proud that I'm her son." But I wish she hadn't done that. I wish she hadn't uh, fought that battle. I don't think um, uh, the fight that she fought um, has in any way been taken up by anyone. I don't think um, what happened to Bilkis Banu shook us up enough to, uh, to somehow girdle up as a society and say, uh, this won't happen ever again. Um, and it keeps on repeating. Um, you know, the, the bestest and the most brilliant of our society were mentioned in those songs because I, I looked up at uh, their stories, I researched them, and I couldn't believe that something would happen to these people and it would uh, cause this little a ripple in, in all of us. Um, Bilkis was, um, I, I don't want to talk about the specifics of the case because um, you yeah. know, just even even the thought that she might ever have to relive all of that, even through my recounting, is um, absolutely. Uh, but I think what, what you said about losing our moral compass, I think that that is at the heart of this. You know, uh, whether it's politics, whether it's all of us as a society, and I think uh, you know one has to wonder if we can be outraged over Nirbhaya and the country sort of rallied together at that time. Why are we not feeling that anger? 
uh, in Bilkis's case. I'm going to come to that in just a second. But Mr. Alok Vats, you're a, you're a member of the BJP. Why is there a silence from the government on this? This is such an outrageous release of, of these convicts. And you hear the whispers, even in the ruling party's corridors, that this was wrong, that this shouldn't have happened. But do you think that somebody needs to come out and say it? Look, Nidhi, this is all under the purview of legal policy. See, according to me, this heinous crime which took place, barbaric crime, they should have been personally, I think, they should have been put to death. And this whole thing would have buried in the pocket. But since they were given life sentence, and as per the remission policy of 1992, as one of your legal luminaries said, Mr. Sundaram, that there is possibility of granting relief to people on the, the convict on expression of regret and reform. And not only these 11 people, but in that committee, 26 prisoners across the state were free. Some of these people who have been freed also had strong medical ground. You know, and one of uh, the prisoners was, two of them were over 70 years and some of them were over 60 years. So the JSC panel, which was formed, you are you are always highlighting that BJP was there. There were other members too. But Alok ji, Alok ji, you you, are, you yourself have called this a barbaric crime. Let me complete. So was the there was the are you justifying the, their release? Uh, are you saying it was okay to release secretary. them, knowing the gravity of the crime? He, yes I or know, no? You see, if you ask me personally, no. But. Okay. If you go by the legal laws, there is a provision. That's fine. That I'm, I'm glad that at least personally you had the courage to take a moral position on this. Alok Vats, you've taken a position on this and you said this was wrong. This shouldn't have been released. Priyanka Chaturvedi, go ahead. This is my personal opinion. So, certainly, that's personal your personal opinion. opinion, but it's good. At least you have the guts but to say it. Priyanka Chaturvedi. Priyanka Chaturvedi. Your, 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 um, Priyanka, sorry, you, your mic is on mute. Uh, you ahead. know, uh, yeah. Niti, when I joined politics, I also, my, my politics uh, became more uh, involved when the Nirbhaya rape case happened. And I continue to believe that we as women have to keep fighting this gender justice cause simply because um, it is not being spoken enough. Now, he says, oh, that this is part of the legal system. Uh, I just have a question for him. Uh, a, the, uh, the Ministry of Home Affairs guideline exempts that particular remission policy for those who are convicted of rape, rape crimes and are serving the life imprisonment on a rape charge. That's one. Number two, I just like to question this entire morality of this committee that was formed by the Gujarat government, where one of the convict approaches the Supreme Court for his own remission. But when it goes from the Supreme Court to the Gujarat government, all 11, all 11, are discharged. So my question is very simple. Are we going to look at these cases through from the prism of legality where again you're bypassing whether it's their parole, whether it is their remission, the guy and uh, bypassing the guidelines uh, issued by the Ministry of Home Affairs. The second is that are we going to be so blinded by what has gone wrong and how immoral this has been that today we are we are taking pride in the fact that Alok what's at least his conscience and morality tells him that what happened is wrong but we are not hear, hearing him say it unequivocally that this is wrong and if there is loophole in our law then we must address it and that address should come from the supreme court or from the government of india or from the gujarat government that uh, that is what we're not seeing absolutely and i i and i think the reason why one one you know, highlights the fact that at least he's personally condemned it is because even that is so hard to come by from politicians these days. Honestly, because of the cynical politics that we're playing. I'll give the last word to Rabi Shergil. Uh, Rabi Shergil, if you had one message for Bilkis today, what would it be? What would you say to her? She's fear she just, fears for her life today. She genuinely fears for her life. And I don't blame her. I'd say come to Punjab. We'd protect you with our um, last um, drop of blood. Come to us. The Sardars will take care of you. And it's just not about um, uh, my community. I think I want to personally hug her and convey to her that her pain is our pain. And she's not alone. And um, we are all there for her. And this is my message to almost everyone. I, and uh, largely the message is, please, let's just start caring about justice. Please, please, let's just uh, make that a priority. Because if we don't do that, uh, we hollow out our society. 
we don't have heroes. Um, our, um, our next generation really wants to just leave India, beg, borrow, steal. Um, it, it's, there is a crisis of uh, morality. There's a crisis of leadership in our country. And um, we, my generation, new generation media, I think, uh, should, you know, step up a notch and, um, you know, really make that center stage of our uh, of our society. We, we really need, uh, I, I think uh, the judiciary and the politicians, um, largely, if you are, talk to people, I think we have been forsaken by them and we only have each other. And we all need to step up. We all need to let each other know how much the other care means to us. The I, I have to say that has been so beautifully and so eloquently expressed by you, Rabi Shergill. Thank you so much to you, uh, Priyanka Chaturvedi, to Alok Vats, to all of you for joining us. I'd like to leave everybody with the song that Rabi Shergill had composed for Bilkis Bano all those years ago. Thanks very much for joining us. <laughs> Jinhe Nazi hai, Hindu